Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV Whiskey One. Good vibrations. Someone asked me a technical question uh, a day or two ago, and it's been eating at my brain because it's 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 such a fascinating uh, question, and yet I. I guess I'm going to have to give you the short answer right away. I don't know for certain what will happen in this situation. I can tell you a lot of theory, but it isn't really going to do much good. And I don't even know how much you can, how, how effectively you can test and compare these two antenna systems or two ways of connecting an antenna system. Suppose, here's an example, let's just put, put a hypothetical. Suppose that you have four different antennas, all of which come down to your shack with coaxial cable of 52 or 50 ohm impedance. The standing wave ratios don't really matter, they may vary slightly, uh, but you can tune that out, your radio should be able to tune that out with its antenna tuner built in, or with an external transmat, you should be able to get the radio to see a one-to-one -one SWR. No matter which one of these antennas you connect to your radio. One of them might be a ground plane, ground mounted, uh, well, a ground mounted vertical with a lot of radials. Uh, say a, a, a multi-band multi trap vertical or any kind of vertical. Another one might be a a dipole cut for the 10 megahertz band, horizontal wire dipole with a ballon fed at the center and then coax coming down to your shack. The third one might be, oh, let's just for the, for the hypothetical say, um, a dipole for a different band, uh, 40 meters say, seven megahertz. And lastly, you have uh, an inverted V for 80 meters coming down to your shack and they're, they're located on a rather large property as you might imagine uh, in scattered locations say a four acre parcel of land or something like that. The inverted V may come down from a single support, the dipole strung between two supports, the ground mounted vertical uh, just right on the ground, of course. And then you have, uh, did I say another dipole for 10 megahertz uh, strung between, well, maybe right, maybe right underneath, uh, well, no, let's just say two entirely different supports. So you've got these four antennas. They come down to your shack. Now you can do one of two things. You can either connect them to your radio individually and when and the unused ones, you can either just let the coax hang free or preferably ground the shield and the center conductor of the coax to a solid earth ground, not located exactly at your radio, just to maximize your lightning safety uh, coefficient, <laughs> okay? LSC, Lima, Sierra, Charlie, lightning, safety, coefficient. Of course, ignoring the fact that lightning has a mind of its own and doesn't give a nano hoot. That's one billionth, 10 to the minus nine hoots about what you think, what your theory is, what your practice is. If your lightning wants you, your lightning's gonna get you, but you can minimize the probability as I have learned from other people's successes and failures in the gambling town of Deadwood, near which I live. Okay, so much for that. That's one way to do it, is to just connect one of the antennas to your radio, whichever one you want to use, and let the others uh, do what they may, ground them preferably, or even just let them hang, let their feed lines hang free. The alternative is to use a coaxial switch and switch among the four antennas. Run one uh, 
cable from your transmatch. Well, well, a cable from your radio to your transmatch, if you have a transmatch. And then from your uh, transmatch, after the transmatch and between the antenna system and the transmatch, you connect your coaxial switch. And that certainly increases the convenience coefficient. Charlie, Charlie. And uh, has nothing to do with dead wood or lightning. It just makes it more convenient to switch amongst these antennas. And then, of course, you run the four different antennas to the four different outputs of the switch. And you can pick and choose which one. Which arrangement would work better? If you use the switch, presumably the shields of all of the coaxial cables will be connected to your station ground all the time and only the center conductors will be switched. Whereas if you completely switch out each antenna and connect only one at a time and let the others hang free or be grounded, then the shield of only the antenna in use would be connected to your station ground, presumably. But the question was this, will there be a difference in the way that the antennas interact with each other, if they're harmonically related or in reasonably close proximity, will the switch affect the way that the other antennas influence the radiation pattern and standing wave ratio of the antenna you want to use? Does it matter whether you use a switch or not? Will a switch work better or would it be better to interchange the cables? one by one individually. And with all the variables in this question and all the theory and uncertainty, the best answer I can give as an experienced antenna expert supposedly is, I don't know. Either method should work. The radiation patterns might differ somewhat the standing wave ratios, which you can tune out with a transmatch anyway, might differ somewhat. But I think either method would work for, for actual ham radio operation purposes. What I don't know is what the coaxial switch does with the center conductors that are not in use. Does it leave them simply free or does it ground them? Uh, I, a good antenna switch, in my opinion, would ground all of the unused center conductors as well as all of the unused shields and leave only the active center conductor ungrounded, of course, going to the transmatch. But I don't know. I've never owned a coaxial switch and probably never will. So the best I can tell you is you might contact ARRL headquarters and see if any of their lab experts know, uh, but in the, in, in, the all, in the long run, in the short run, in the medium run, I would say worry more about how safe your station is, particularly with respect to lightning, and worry less about the theoretical particulars of what it'll do to the radiation patterns, because you're more or less asking me to predict the outcome of a roulette wheel in Deadwood before it's been spun? The answer is, I don't have a clue. And I, quite frankly, don't give a nano hoot. Even if I had the antenna, I'd go for the switch just because of the convenience coefficient. But don't just take my advice and, and use it as gospel because it's anything but. It's the opinion of a person who is an experienced antenna expert, and the more experience you get in that field, the more you realize that you know less and less. If I were a perfect, omniscient genius with respect to antennas, I would have to tell you honestly that I know nothing at all. It's sort of like dividing by zero. It's not defined yet. 
Maybe that great guru in the sky knows the answer, but I don't. See, you just wasted however many minutes of your time listening to Stan Gibalisco, who will now finish yammering and tell you 73 and so long, which, regardless of the antenna switching system, always translates to so long, di-di-di-da-di-da. Di, di, di,